Hey guys, I just wanted to give you a sneak peek at OpenJS Grade version 1.3. 1.2 just came out with a bug fix. 1.3 has some cool new features, um, including uh, drop down boxes and check boxes. Okay, so these are more editable options um, that you have now. So they're really cool and they're really easy to use. Uh, the whole point of this grid, obviously. So what you can do is you can check a box, uncheck a box, and change it, whatever, and it all is savable back, right? It's boom, like that. I've also added the ability to have block UI. If you have block UI, let me just uh, hop over here. If you have block UI, it's a really great plugin that blocks an interface for you with, with some data. So it's got support for it if you have it installed. Um, all it is is just a JS file. All you have to do is include the JS file. Um, but basically, uh, yeah, it'll it'll load the grid now because I was using the grid on a website and it had some really big queries on it and because of that it was sitting closed for a while with nothing going on so now it will tell you if it's loading it'll also tell you if it's saving on that as well um, so yeah so let's show you how to implement these drop downs and these checkboxes so if we go over here to our index page um, all so we've done one change as well before editable was set to inline for text fields. Well, now I've decided to make that the type of text field. Inline will still work if you have that and you upgrade to this version. I've made a little legacy there. That's going to probably go away in version 2 of this grid. But for now, you can do text or inline. They both work. But use text if you can. Um, so the other two options are select is the drop down and then checkbox are the two other types. You don't have to do anything else to this file other than that. Okay? That's really all you have to do here. The change comes in the Ajax file where, okay, so we, let me just space this out a little bit. So before, um, all we were doing is doing grid load, right? And then when we added saving, we said, okay, we'll check for post save and then just call grid save. Well, for select box, and so checkboxes is already done. Checkboxes, all it does is say, okay, am I a zero or am I a one? And it does it. I'll show you that in a second. But for this, for select boxes, you have it actually uses Ajax to go create the select box because the select box will probably not have data from the uh, will probably not have data from the table you're currently on. Yeah, that's what I want to say. So what we can do is we basically use the same methods as we do for complex queries. You set grid where and you set grid, I mean you don't even have to do these at all. You don't have to have these if you don't want to. But the key here is that this make select function. So just like we had grid save and, and, and grid load, we have grid make select. And this is going to create the select box for you. Well it's not actually going to create the select box, that's done in JavaScript. It's going to create the array that will then be used to create the select box. And so I know I'm passing it the same thing here and here, but all I'm passing it is the first is the value. So if you look at a select box, you've got uh, select, right? Slash select. And then you've got an option, right? Which has value equal to something. And then you've got a display here. So blah, right? And then option. So you've got some, some, some part of data here and some part of data here. Okay, so this first piece of data is the key in the database that will be used to go here. Okay, and then this will be the key of the database that's used to display this. Okay, so on my database, I've got um, TXN ID right here. Um, I'm using the current table that I'm on. I'm using the orders table. You can change that though. You don't have to. You don't. You don't have to use the orders table. You can actually pass in another parameter here, being the table that you want to use. And frankly, I just realized you don't even need to do that. I'm going to get rid of that actually cuz you can set grid table just like that and and change the table if you want. Um, that's perfectly fine to do. This doesn't have to use the table that you're currently on because chances are you're going to be getting a select a drop down box on another table, okay? It's not likely that you're going to be doing this scenario, which I probably shouldn't be explaining it this way, but whatever. You get the idea. So, TXN ID is the column name for that's going to show me the value that I want. And TXN ID is also the column name that I want to be in the display. Okay? So let's take a look at how it actually does it for grid make select. So if I come down here to make select, okay, you see it takes in a value display in a table. And you know what? I'm going to get rid of this now because it doesn't need to be here and I don't need to do this at all. I'll just use this table. That's perfectly fine. Because you can set this table so there's no reason to do that extra work. So we will just put that in brackets and say this table. Cool. 
So there we go, right? So now you can set the table. So all this does is it says, okay, do I have a where? I can set an order by, I can set a sort order, and I can set a limit. You know, these are all the different things you could do to create the select box. But you see I've got the value of the display. And then I basically run the query, and then I get all the results from the query. I'm going to die on error, just in case, so I can give myself some feedback. And then this is the key here. I'm creating this data array where I've got the, the, the key here, okay, the key of this array is that value. See how I'm doing row value? Value being the key that I told you I wanted to be my the value attribute of my option. And then here is row display. This is the key that belongs to the display. Okay, and the display being because what you're going to want to do with the drop down is you're going to want to have the value be like a number. Like say you're doing months, right? This would be um, ID of the month and this would be the actual month name because you don't want to save the month name back to the database you want to save what this is and this is the exact this is the value that's actually saved back to the database so anyway I store that in this data just like I do for load so if you're used to using load this is all fine and you write that and then you just do echo JSON encode grid data just like you do here so it's all straightforward with that and then the way it works in JavaScript is uh, that's the save button uh, that is that. So here's here's the code already that we had for text box. So select box is not much different. Um, first, it goes and gets that data. It sends that select flag, right, that we looked at. It also sends the column if you want that. Um, then it's going to loop through the TDs. That's all it's doing is looping through the TDs. And then uh, all we're going to do is create the select box and then loop through the options in our select box and create the select box. It's also going to select the one if it equals the text. So it's also going to select the right option in the select box if need be, right? Super simple. And then it's going to add the focus so it can do the class. Again, you can look at our old inline editing videos for how to do that. And that's basically all you have to do. Then it will resize the columns to fit. And then here's checkbox. It's very simple. All it does is is if, if, it's a, if it's a one, it's checked. If it's a zero, it's not checked. And there, that's pretty simple. So there you go. That's how you do checkboxes and dropdowns and this is coming in version 1.3 probably released next week.